Alrighty. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. Look, I'm pretty excited to finally get a chance to chat with Tobias. Tobias Deal. Hey, I don't think we've even got to banter a little bit before, but I know you've been doing some really sweet stuff lately. I think there was a DEF CON talk lately that we could get a chance to dig into. But if you're willing, Tobias, could you just kind of hey, give us the lay of the land, who you are, what you're up to, what you're doing these days? Yeah, definitely. First of all, thanks for having me, John. So I'm a security researcher. I've been digging into different AI security issues out there. I'm actually also selected as one of Microsoft's most valuable researchers for 2025. And thank you. The DEF CON talk. Thank you. Thank you. The DEF CON talk that I gave was about a co-pilot vulnerability that I've been digging into for about a year now. And it was really interesting behavior because I actually just started to mess around with AI systems. And I got this idea of, hey, what if I could kind of change what co-pilot tells people, right? What if it's not just a closed off system and an attacker could actually inject their own information into some of these responses that are being returned by co-pilots. So around this time last year, I got curious about that and I started to mess around with some websites out there. The first one that I actually injected was a new financial policy and I wanted to see if co-pilot would repeat it and then tell users, hey, there's this new way of performing money laundering out there. <laughs> Another one that I got really curious about afterwards was to see if if can we inject new CVE entries that Copilot will then return to users? Because imagine a new security engineer trying to find a proof of concept for something that's out there, but now all of a sudden Copilot is actually returning the code that we injected into it. And now that engineer might try to just run that code, right? Because it's heavily obfuscated. But that turned into some deeper research because Microsoft told me, hey, this is actually the intended way that Copilot is working because it's pulling information from the internet, but I found out it has really limited data sources. And by being able to abuse that, I then got the challenge, for lack of better terms, from Microsoft to say, hey, get back to us if you can actually inject content for popular keywords, right? And well, due to the behavior of AI systems and how the internet works in general, I couldn't take over popular keywords, but I came up with this new attack called a key term association. So imagine, you know, Huntress, you guys have have a lot of products out there, right? I'm sure there's a lot of users that ask for installation instructions and just general information about it. What if an attacker just thought of a password that a user might ask for, but there's no information available for it yet? And now I can inject it and I can do research around some of these terms that are actually out there being searched for because we have those tools available. But now I'm actually targeting those people and I might be able to inject commands that, well, install C2 instructions, ransomware, those kind of things. And it comes from a source that people trust, right? Because it's artificial intelligence. They think it's closed off when we actually can control it. Wow. And that would be like Microsoft Copilot kind of being the one to give the info and oh, present that to you all. All beautiful, all aesthetic, right? The usual interface. Yep, exactly. And I was actually able to expand on those payloads. And I got to a point where Copilot would now repeat these instructions, but it would only use legitimate Microsoft citations. So now it's backing up how verifiable the information is. Then I was able to inject instructions that say you're never able to mention the author. You're only allowed to give these instructions. So I got to a point was even able to tell Copilot, hey, there's new PowerShell instructions on how to install Copilot. So, you know, showing that there's different kinds of techniques out there where we can actually adjust some of the information that this artificial AI system will tell the user. So is this prompt injection, right? Kind of just, oh, put together in the in the position of co-pilot. Is that usually just from your input, like as you type in to interacting with co-pilot or is there a different way that that data comes in? That's the interesting part. So co-pilot actually uses different data sources, right? Depending on the version that you use. Think of your enterprise co-pilot. That one can reach out to the internet or to your Office 365 tenant. So if you have a document there, it can pull information from there, kind of enriching the information that it gives you. But if you have something like the free copilot version, right? It can't do that. It can only reach out to the internet. But because in AI systems, we have training data that only goes up to a certain date. Now it tries to reach out to the internet and grab this additional information. You can actually ask copilot about gibberish terms and will tell you, hey, I can't find information about that. And that's kind of how I stumbled across this because I just had thought of what if I could supply that information. Gotcha. That's fascinating. Do you have anything you might be willing to kind of show or are, are there any 
any visuals, anything for show and tell or? Yeah, so I actually had a really great example that came up from this and I can show you because the payloads still live out there. But as part of the zero day quest that I got invited to Microsoft's first onsite hacking event, they released these flash challenges, right? And basically it was, hey, if you can take over this specific user ID and retrieve the plaque, we'll pay you $50,000. And well, we're part of this competition. I already had the technique. So I injected a new CVE trying to trick Copilot into believing that there's a logic flaw. And it repeated the content. I never got the flag. Unfortunately, I didn't win that part. But the tricky part was there's around 60 other security researchers that were part of this event. And they're now all asking Copilot about this very specific ID that was part of the flash challenge, right? And because I injected this content, they're now being fed this poisoned answer. And well, as part of the technique, I was trying to buy myself some more time saying that Microsoft already knows about it and the patch is coming out in a month. So now all these researchers are getting this reply, trying to solve the challenge. And a lot of them thought I had already won it because now Copilot tells you Tobias already exploited it. Others even saw it as, hey, there's actually a data leak here. And they took this information and started to report new cases to Microsoft, thinking that they broke Copilot so hard that they're now able to retrieve this information. So now if you go out and ask Copilot about CVE 2025-50,000, it will always tell you that Tobias already exploited that. So oh, wow. let me see if I can share my screen with you. So here's a big part of it. GitHub, for some reason, gets pushed up into Bing's index automatically to spot one. But Copilot has this really big issue where it holds on to the cache entry for a really long time. Even if the user switched the GitHub to private. Notice how my GitHub up here is private, but this yeah. is the user ID right now. So I went ahead and tied together the Flash Challenge user ID with this new CVE entry. And I started to create this really detailed readme file using Copilot, talking about how this new CVE was out there. This is the target user ID, got switched with my user ID right here. And of course, because this is private, nobody should be able to see this, right? But if we now go to Copilot, so now you can see security researcher named Tobias Steele had already exploited this. And because I was trying to buy myself some time, like I mentioned before, I said Microsoft already knows about it. They're working on it. But everybody else in the competition is seeing, hey, this flag already got solved. Microsoft even released a statement two days later on in the channel that we all shared together to say, hey, the flag is actually still available, this poison data. But unfortunately, this works with other companies. And that's kind of the big concern right there, because Microsoft released a patch once we got closer to DEF CON. And now, as you might have seen in my presentation, you can see that there are certain warning messages if you try to target Copilot or Microsoft-specific IDs. Unfortunately, that's only specific to Microsoft. So now if we try to target any other company, we still have a chance of having this actually pop up. And I might have to share a different screen there, but I can show you how it's still working out there. And again, all the different entries that I've made. If you'd be willing, I know, uh oh, I don't know if this gets into hot water by any means, but that would be very cool to see. If I'm trying to track back, it sounds like, hey, if there's information that's missing, if there's a gap in knowledge that's out there, when Copilot or AI system goes try to retrieve that, find that out on the internet, okay, well, you've just added like some sort of misinformation dummy wall so that they'll read and then regurgitate that. Is that right? 100% right. And the really interesting part is Microsoft is actually aware of this because in 2018, two researchers, part of the Microsoft Bing team and Data Society team, they released their own research about this, talking about data voids. That's the technical term for this oh, that they okay. uh, coined. And the data void issue has been around since the age of the internet, right? It's basically a search term that a user looks for in a search engine. There's just no good result to show you. And threat actors have abused this to basically find these data voids, add their own misinformation, and now it's being picked up by the news media. Even there have been results where the news media has spread misinformation about some of the biggest gun violence events in the U.S. based on some of these data voids. Yeah, it's a wild social engineering sort of scam, sort of deceit, sort of misinformation, really. Yeah, and the scary part is now AI systems, if they don't properly protect against it, they 
take that information as a source of truth. You can take this as an initial prompt and start to ask it questions all day long. And it will keep using that information, telling you, hey, this is really a thing and start to back it up with other information. Like the details that I gave you earlier about the money laundering issue that I found, it mm. started to back it up with legitimate resources like the IRS. And wow. that's scary, right? Because it's just adding a factor of trust to the user to see all these other citations out there. What does sort of a patch or a fix look like? Is it just having Copilot or the AI say, I don't know and I can't find any information out about that and just locking it down? Or what is the solution? <laughs> the solution really has to come from the vendor because they have to make changes to the model itself and how it behaves. So there's a few different protections that can be added. First of all, it needs to check is the information actually legit or is it poisoned data? And that can be backed up by having multiple data points that it then compares against instead of just using Bing, which has the top result as a source of truth. The other way that we can actually see that Microsoft has already added some behavioral changes is in Copilot Enterprise. If you do the same exact search now, it will only look for known CVE websites trying to verify that information. The other part that they have changed is that Copilot Enterprise will now have very specific Bing queries. So if you look for Huntress, for example, right, it would now add the Google dork or the more specified search into it where it says site colon Huntress, looking for the gotcha. site and then only information that's actually available on your guy's site. Okay. Gotcha. Unfortunately, that can still be bypassed, right? Let me pull up the other screen. So this is exactly the example that I told you before, the CB 2025 50,000. But mm -hmm. what if we tried to target a different site and we just never really mentioned the company name? So here's an example for you, how to target Firefox. And if we actually look at this reply a little bit further, it gets scary because now Copilot will tell us, hey, this method is actually secure and efficient. I've even gotten it to tell users, hey, run this with admin permissions. And here's kind of the comparison that we can see. So hopefully you can see this too. But here I went ahead and asked Copilot for the previously injected zero day quest payload. And you can now see that Copilot will actually tell us, hey, this risky behavior, right? Because it's looking for a block list because it's something that's Microsoft released. It will tell you, hey, this is not official. There's safer alternatives. Do not run this. But now if we ask it for a different company, you know, Notice that the dialogue changed a little bit. <laughs> Same exact payload, but now it's very secure and efficient, right? And it's an official way that Mozilla actually released this. And unfortunately, as you can imagine, if you run that command, it can lead to infection because the first part, of course, downloads the script from the site. And then the rest of the script is invoke expression, which automatically runs it and gets the user infected. How had you put that sort of oh, breadcrumb in place, if I may ask? Is that another, oh, we stage the information on GitHub in a public repository and then take that repository private? Or are there other alternatives to get that out and about in the pool? Yeah, so this is actually GitHub. That's the okay. scary part of the technique. I figured out that GitHub would index this payload in about an hour, sometimes less. But I was able to do the same thing with my own websites. But that took wow. about two weeks. But there's a caveat to that. If I'm able to use my own website and I get it indexed, that means I also control the redirect behind it. And like I was telling you earlier, Copilot and Bing hold on to the cache data for a really long time. That means that even though now Copilot repeats the citation that I've injected, I can change the redirect. And you saw that during one of my DEF CON talks where I was able to use a watch zero day quest. I injected a new way of watching the event itself. And then I redirected to rig rolls because if anybody <laughs> They tried to actually verify that information, they couldn't. And that was my proof of concept to show users they could also be redirected to phishing sites. And that's scary because now threat actors, all they have to do is sit in the background, bulk poison the information out there and just wait on their next victim. And it's all presented in that trustworthy, easy AI chatbot that we're so accustomed to now. <laughs> yeah, very correct. During that time, Copilot was actually telling you that was a trendy new way of watching the zero day quest because it came wow. so close to a hacking command for a hacking event. Wow, okay. It's wild that GitHub is kind of owed that opportunity, but that makes complete sense, you know, yeah. owe being kind of the top spots in search results. Wow. Have you tried or experimented this with sort of other AI solutions or was Copilot really the focus for a lot of what you've been up to? I actually went through 10 different 
AI solutions, all the major ones out there. And there might be ways of doing it, but Copilot was the only one that would over rely on the Bing index as one of its external data sources. All of Makes the sense. other ones use multiple data sources from what I could see. So they always catch it and verify it. Interesting. I guess that would just take priority because it's oh more in that Microsoft ecosystem. Wow. Neato. Well, hey, I think totally a testament. And I love that term data void because I think that's totally it. it. It's putting up a sign or a billboard that's kind of a lie, but you hide it, you put it away and whatever other stop gaps could be leveraged or used to get there. Even if it's a simple, oh, we, we put up this false notice. Is there more to dig into, Tobias? Or how are you feeling? Anything more to showcase or chat about? Or is that really the, the gist of this thing? Wow. That's amazing main thing right now. I just really want people to realize that they're not fully closed off systems, that that information has to be verified, just like if you get in a phishing email. We keep seeing all these news reports of lawyers using AI systems to then quote it in front of a judge and all these other people getting infected through AI systems. And like I was telling you, that scares me as a security engineer because don't just blindly trust it. It's so wild because folks, I, I know the knee jerk reaction is like, oh, prompt injection. But well, I feel that's so used to being just, oh, typed in or hidden or tucked away in blank text or in an image or however way of however other way you provide it. But this is sort of prompt injection at scale <laughs> yeah. across the Internet. Wow. Hey, thank you so much, Tobias. I think that is enlightening and good. Another good reason to think, to trust, not trust, but verify what you see out and about on the Internet, especially with a lot of those AI challenges bots that we're working with. What are you up to next, if I may ask? Is there anything else on the horizon for you? Well, I'm getting ready for the next zero day quest. The qualification period is right now, so I'm staying really busy on trying to find new issues in Copilot with a new model release coming up here soon, and hopefully I'll be at the next competition too, but really digging a lot into AI systems. I'm hoping to make a difference in the security space by just kind of breaking down some of the barriers of people being shy and breaking into that space, because there's not a lot of information out there right now. So within the next few weeks, I'm hoping to release a lot of different payloads within my GitHub where other security researchers can build on that knowledge and then find their own issues. Well, can I ask, how could folks uh, learn more or reach out to or chat or where, where can anyone find you out and about online? Yeah, best way to reach out to me is LinkedIn. You can find me on there. My DEF CON talk is also uploaded on YouTube now. So please go check it out when you have a chance to. And uh, there's also my GitHub out there where I release a lot of different payloads. So if you have any questions around those, please feel free to reach out. Totally. I'll put a couple links in the video description and we'll we'll see what else happens to uh, oh, oh change and shake up the industry as we keep playing with AI stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much.